Chairman, uh, Mr. Secretary, obviously these are pretty complex issues. Uh, I do not envy you and the President your task at all. You're in my prayers, the President's in my prayers. I actually ask all Americans to include you in your prayers because if you succeed, we all want you to succeed. That means America and Americans remain safe. Um, I've been listening to you and the President very carefully. I'm sure the world has been as well. And, and words have real meaning. So I appreciate the fact that uh, you've testified today here that ISIL must be defeated, period. End of story. You know, the President, in his speech to the nation, said that the goal here is to degrade and ultimately destroy ISIS. But, but, he, but here's my concern. Here, here's my problem. In the, final conclude, in the final two paragraphs of his speech to the nation, President Obama said, our, our own safety, our own security depends on our willingness to willingness to do what it takes to defend this nation, but, Mr. Secretary, by taking options off the table, isn't President Obama really saying to do what it takes up to a point? And as Secretary of State, as you're dealing with potential coalition partners who are also listening, if we stay at a goal and the world doesn't believe we're 100 percent committed to it, is that going to be very difficult for you to get the kind of commitment out of our potential partners? to do what they need to do to actually achieve that ultimate goal? That's a very fair and a, and a really good question. And by the way, thank you for, for, for your comments and your prayers. Um, the answer is that um, uh, the President and the military folks currently believe we have the capacity, we have the plan, we have the coalition to be able to do the job. Now. Uh, you know, there are a lot of countries in the region who have capacity going forward who, in our judgment, if somebody's necessary to be on the ground, ought to be lining up first. So there are a lot of options here before we start getting to the talk the okay, President's so, taking so, off so, the so, table. So, okay, we, we've covered, we've covered so, that ground. L let me ask you, in your discussions with, for example, Saudi Arabia, Arabia do the potential Arab states, do they understand how fragile American public opinion will be toward this effort, toward this destruction, if they don't fully commit? And, and when I think fully commit, I, I'm thinking back to the first Gulf War, when America only had to pay for about 15 percent of that, and almost 50 percent were, were of that war effort was paid for by Gulf states, the other portion was paid by Germany and Japan. I mean, do they understand? why it's so important for them to step up the plate and visibly support this effort. Yes. And in fact, King Abdullah said to me personally, we will do whatever is needed to be done. We are committed fully to this effort, and they have been. Now, there are bigger complications than just sitting here and talking about having the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia put its troops on the ground in Syria, uh, next door to Iran, with all of the, com of the, of the extraordinary uh, complications of the region regarding Shia, Sunni, and other geostrategic challenges. So we need to be working at this very carefully with all of the nations that are part of the coalition, recognizing we have to win. And, and we're just getting started at that. So uh, I can tell you we're not going into this uh, in order to fail, and nor are any of these other people who are signing up. So. Well, let me offer, I'll, I'll be in, up in New York uh, next week uh, representing the United States and the UN with uh, Senator Cardin. I'd like to offer you know, whatever I can do to help convince those Arab states that they do need to be fully committed to this, to this battle. Let, let me ask you another question. An analogy I've been using, here's another concern of mine. Uh, if this is going to literally take years, the analogy I've been using is if you identify a, a, a hornet's nest in your backyard, you, you realize, boy, we've got to take care of that. But if what we're really doing is just going in the backyard and poking that hornet's nest with a stick, isn't that a concern right now if, if we aren't fully committed to, to wipe out ISIS quickly? Uh, you mentioned Brett McGurk provided powerful testimony to this committee back in the end of July about the threat that ISIS uh, really does represent being able to funnel 30 to 50 suicide bombers in, into Iraq per month. Now, now, now we've seen those suicide bombers come from Australia and Germany and America with passports. And Mr. McGurk's comment was they could easily funnel those uh, suicide bombers in, into the West and into America. So that, that's my concern about allowing this 
not being fully committed, not getting in there, not cleaning out that hornet's nest as quickly as possible. Uh, don't we just increase and, and increase the time where we're really under, under threat and danger? Well, we hope not, uh, Senator. Obviously, that's not uh, our strategy. I mean, look, ISIL, why, why do we have to focus first on ISIL and focus on it in the way that we are? Because they're seizing and holding thousands of square miles of territory. Because they are claiming to be a, a state. They're not a state in so many ways, and we can go through that. They are confronting and defeating, uh, thus far, conventional army with conventional tactics. They have, they are avowed genocidists, avowed genocidists, who have already practiced genocidal activities at a certain level. Yazidis, uh, Shia, people that they've decided to go after along the way, Christians. Uh, and they have a very large amount of money, unlike lots of other terrorist organizations, because they cleaned out the banks and they have sold oil and done other things uh, in the process. And so even Al-Qaeda, bold as they were in what they decided to do, didn't ha exhibit these characteristics and didn't have those capacities. And that's why we, we, we believe, and we think most of the region has come to understand this, including the moderate opposition, who are already fighting ISIL. So we believe we have the makings of an ability to be able to uh, have a very, very significant impact. And already, by the way, France and the United Kingdom are flying with us over Iraq, and several other countries are now starting to be willing to join that. So we think we have the building uh, of an ability to be able to turn that around. Uh, I guarantee you the President's goal is to defeat them, and as you and we see this unfold and make judgments about how well we're doing, uh, we can you know, have further discussions about what else it may or may not take to get the job done. But at the moment, these are the judgments that are being made. Well, thank you. You've made a strong case for defeating ISIS uh, this, and being fully committed to doing it. The sooner the better. Thank you. Senator Durbin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh